Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Trauma Recovery University. I'm your host, Athena Moberg, and with me today is, um, is Jody Amen. Um, as many of you know, Jody is uh, she she operates in this space uh, with us. Uh, she speaks to the survivor community. She's held retreats for survivors. She's incredible. She's an author. She has a new book out, and I'm interviewing her. I've invited her uh, today just for a casual talk into our homes uh, to talk about her new book titled "You One." Anxiety Zero. So just a little bit about Jodi and um, and where she comes from and just the, the space that she's speaking from. Uh, if you have not um, subscribed to her YouTube channel, there's a link down below and there's also a link to her book as well. And you can also find her at JodiAmon.com. But I'm going to read you a little bit of her bio here. So from the garden she started when she was eight years old to the baby ducks she found a home for when she was 10. Jody has always been passionate about nurturing life with sharp empathy into the complexities of people's pain since she has recovered from her own family chaos and panic attacks and uh, she has a keen understanding of how why people get stuck how and why people get stuck and she's decided to dedicate her entire life to um, helping people feel less lonely and less afraid. And so if you're here on our channel, you're an adult survivor of childhood abuse, probably childhood sexual abuse. And we as a community, just as individuals, tend to feel lonely and afraid in our recovery journey, especially if we're just recovering new memories. And it can just be very frightening. So um, Jody has suffered previously uh, with such debilitating depression and anxiety and low self-esteem that she didn't even want to get out of bed sometimes. But um, I think what's important for us to keep in mind during our time we hang out with Jody today is that she's been there and she's gotten out and she knows how to help you get out too. So it is just an honor and a privilege to um, to introduce you to our new friend here at Trauma Recovery University, Jody Amen. Welcome, Jody. Thanks so much. Thank you. So such kind words, Athena. I'm so happy to be here. We've been following each other for a long time and talking a lot, and I love doing this stuff together. Well, this is it's just really exciting um, for me. I know um, I reached out to Jody um, probably like over a year, maybe almost two years ago, when I first sort of shifted from business coaching into working with survivors and just sort of been following ever since. And um, and I'm a fan of your videos. Uh, Jody's YouTube channel, if you uh, are not aware, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Jody Amen. Um, she has an entire library of videos all about um, – overcoming anxiety, feeling better, uh, with real tools and tips and strategies. And just she's so transparent and just lovable and likable in her videos. And um, her, her thumbnails are so easy. It's easy to, for you to find exactly the video you're looking for. Um, there's one particular one on OCD that she and I were just talking about off the air. And it's one of my favorite ones. And uh, just videos overall on just how to love yourself and like yourself. And for survivors, it's um, it's difficult to love ourselves and like ourselves because of the toxic shame that comes along with sexual abuse in our childhood. But I would just love, Jody, if I could, to sort of turn this over to you and just allow you to um, just look into the faces of our beautiful family. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's our friendly family that we choose, all of our friends here that come every single week and hang out with us. And I would just love for you to just look in their faces and just tell them from whatever place you're coming from, um, if you knew that there was one survivor sitting there today watching, and usually the way people find our YouTube channel is they're Googling like suicide or something regarding childhood sexual abuse. So for that survivor out there that could be in crisis or is in just a really dark place right now and just needing some sort of a lifeline, could you just look into their face and maybe just share from a personal experience or just, um, I know you mentioned off the air, just some really wonderful tips. Uh, I would love for you to just share from the heart as long as you would like to share. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, um, I think I, what I want people to know, I am getting a little echo. Do you hear that or is it okay? I don't hear it. It will probably show up a little bit okay. later, but it's totally fine. Okay. No worries. Go for it. All right. Good. 
good because I want people to really hear and I know that's distracting, but I don't want any distractions because this is the message that I want to give is that there's so many, there's so much pain out there and there's so much suffering and you know, you feel so alone in it. Um, and you're not really that. I mean, obviously look at here, look at how many people are gathered around in this community, this trauma recovery um, community because there's so many people who have gone through that what you've gone through and there's so many people who absolutely understand and i think a lot of times when we're in our own recovery we feel like nobody understands or nobody gets it and that makes us feel worse like it makes us feel crazy it makes us feel different and when we feel different and crazy we feel separate and when you're separate you're vulnerable you know, you're alone, you're sad, and it validates all that kind of sadness and suffering that you have and just increases that doubt and shame that comes along, you know, with having these experiences. And people sometimes don't understand why they feel so guilty because cognitively they could know, you know, I didn't cause this, it wasn't my fault, I didn't do this. But in your hearts, like, you feel so... Um, ashamed and guilty and none of that's yours like that you don't deserve it at all you've never done anything wrong this wasn't nothing to this is about you you didn't do anything you did not deserve this it was not okay that that happened um, you didn't cause it and I think you know what happens is our shame like tells us over and over for years and years and years that um, that it is our responsibility or somehow it must have been our fault because it doesn't make sense otherwise and um, so when we finally begin to tell ourselves that it wasn't our fault, you have to repeat it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I mean like a lot because that doubt and that anxiety has repeated it and that shame has repeated it for years and years and years. And let me tell you why we feel so ashamed when people are mean to us or when people hurt us and betray us in the worst possible way, like sexual abuse and physical abuse. And emotional abuse and the thing is is like it's chaotic we're really confused we don't understand it you know if you like humans we want order I mean that's what the, we were talking about OCD and that's what OCD is about like you feel out of control and you try to do something to make yourself feel more in control you know and then you feel bad about that and then you have to get more control and then you feel bad about that and you have to get more control so it kind of like feeds on itself like anxiety does but what happens is when we're really young and you know we're just gonna crave order. So let me this is an example that helps illustrate this because it takes it right. Sometimes you have to understand a concept outside of yourself because then you don't have all that baggage to figure it out, you know? And so if you think about think about the woods, like think about nature. It's chaotic, like there's no patterns, there's no rhyme or reason. If you're in the forest, there's like fallen trees everywhere, or there's all this stuff going on, you know, everything's different, there's nothing the same. And if you put a person out there in the woods and you said, stay under this tree for a few hours and you left them alone there and you came back a couple hours later, you know, this person would be sitting under the tree still if they listened and they would have stacks of stones there and they would have sticks in a row and they would have made like a soft seat for themselves because we crave order so much that we have to in any setting that feels chaotic to us, we have to start to create order. So if you keep that in mind and then think about when you were young and something happened to you, it's chaotic, it doesn't make sense, it's nonsensical that someone would do that. It just doesn't, just bizarro, it doesn't make sense why someone would abuse. And so we need to make order of it. And the fastest way we can make order of it is blame. That's the fastest thing that we could do. And sometimes we blame the other person, but a lot of times when you're young, you blame yourself. So this is where that guilt comes from. That's where the shame comes from. When you're young, it's chaos and you have to make order. And so you decide that it was your fault because it makes it, ha you have to make, and then it really doesn't make sense. So you keep asking and asking, you could ask for years, like, is it me? Was it them? Is it me? Was it, why did this happen to me? Why did I let it? Why did this happen? Why did I let it? And you could keep going on. You know, we try to create order, but then we're just creating more chaos and creating a lot more suffering. And um, and so I want you to know that that and that happens, and we don't understand that's what's happening. We just feel it, and it's suffering so bad, and we we're so you know 
bowled over by it. And so what I really want people to know is like we understand where it comes from and then we understand how to get rid of it because you don't deserve it at all and you've done nothing and you're just amazing and beautiful and you're so much more amazing than you know. And so I, I'd like to, you know, I just would like to give you that hope that it's there. And then if you want, you know, if you stick around with me, I could show you exactly how to do it. In my book, like I outline it. I mean, my book is about anxiety and for anyone who's suffering from anxiety, but I like to think of this book as for survivors, for people surviving from trauma, because that's the biggest part of my work. You know, most people I work with are survivors. I'm a therapist also, as well as an author. but the most people that I've worked with for the last 20 years have been survivors. And so, you know, a lot of that work is in this book and I should have put it in the title actually, but yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, my message is to have hope and that's what my intention is for this video. And I'm so happy to be here and in front of you all. And, and, um, I see you, I know you, and I know you're incredible. I do. I know. And I love hearing uh, Athena's passion for you because she's right on. She's right on and it's beautiful. She loves you and you're lovable and I love you. And we love each other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jody. Oh my gosh. Thanks for sharing with everyone just your heart. It's like tear jerking to just hear your heart for people. And I'm just so grateful. Um, our community of survivors is just so close knit and just to think that there just a couple years ago, every, every single person that we have gathered on this channel was all just wandering around separately, just trying to sort of figure it all out. And over the culmination of a couple of years, we've all sort of joined together and um, to have you here just talking into their living rooms or into their mobile devices or what have you is just, a, it's a privilege. You guys, I'm going to share something with you really quick. I'm going to do a screen share. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you're not going to see us for a moment, but I want to share something with you. Um, I want to share Jody's book so you know what the book cover looks like. And I want to show you her website real quick. Um, so her website's awesome. If you have a chance to go there, the link is down in the description. And um, can you see it? Uh, can you see I that? see it, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So you guys, here is Jody's website. It's jodyamon.com. This is her book cover here and her beautiful face. And this is actually, there's a video on her channel of her opening her box from Amazon. Um, and it's one of my favorite videos. Yeah. It's the unboxing of her receiving her galley, uh, which is, uh, it's the the final version that goes to the press and goes to her street team and uh, she opens up her her box and and sees her baby that she spent all this time writing this book right here this book was written for you so um, I'm gonna click over here to Amazon if you click on the link below in the description you'll see here and I'm going to read for you if you're driving or if, if uh, a lot of you are aud audible um, learners so here's a picture of the book cover you can um, actually look inside and you can read I believe up to 6,000 words um, it, I believe cool. in the in the in the, um, in the look inside on Amazon but I'm gonna read this to you guys okay or actually Jody can you see it okay would you like to read this sure. in your heart I would love for you to read the description sure. for them anxiety doesn't play fair it antagonizes you it lies to you. It steals away the best parts of you. Don't let it keep cheating you out of happiness. You are too important. And you want anxiety zero. I highlight the ways anxiety manipulates and entraps you. And the precise tools that you can use to see through anxiety's mind tricks and break, three, break free from the prison of fear, stress, and doubt. All bets are off. It's time for you. Anxiety is curable, even if you've had it forever, even if therapy hasn't worked, even if you feel hopeless, you've got this. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jody. You're welcome. Let me try to click back here. So here's Jody's website. Let me. 
All right. Thank you, Jody. Sure. So you guys, <laughs> so you guys um, I I'm just grateful to have this brief time here uh, with Jody here, and I want to encourage you to leave her some questions if you have questions about anxiety, if you have questions about the book, if you have questions about the work she does, if you are in the Rochester area and you're on the you're in the upper northeast, you're in the northeast, <laughs> and you have um, access to uh, coming to one of her retreats that she does for survivors, I would encourage you to think about that. Contemplate that. Contemplate. Um, yeah, I'm about to um, set another date. I've been thinking about it. Like, I got to set the date for the next retreat. But I do do, I still do online Skype counseling. I just, <clears throat> I'll never give up my practice. I just love so much my work with people. I mean, I love working groups. I think it's so powerful, but I still do the individual work too. That's amazing. So Bobby, yeah. Bobby used to be um, a therapist, but she is only doing coaching now. She's transitioned over to trauma recovery yeah. coaching. Um, I didn't ask you this ahead of time, so I hope it's okay that I'm kind of putting you on the spot. Sure. But if we have people... Um, that reach out to us as they sometimes do. We get emails every single day, like our email box. I was just telling, I was just telling a, a colleague last night on on a Skype meeting that our site was down because we were um, updating some things, and I didn't receive any correspondence on our con from our contact forms for like 24 hours. And I was kind of like, why don't I have any emails from anyone? Like. I hope everybody's okay. Like, I have no messages. This is odd. It was just the strangest thing. But we get messages all the time, Jody, where people are looking for a therapist. They're looking for someone. And so um, if you would like to give them your contact information. Sure, yeah. If you go, video. yeah, if you're on my website, jodyuman.com, on the top it says work with me. Click on that and it tells you exactly what to do. You just, you know, you could put your name in there, name and email, and you'll get an email with my information. And then I just email you back my my online schedule, and that's it. Then you know you show up, and I show up, and we we get right to work. So yeah, awesome. I would love yeah. to be able to to refer people to you. And you guys, if you if you have it in your budget, please click on over to Amazon and get this book. Um, I'm waiting on my autographed copy. I pre ordered. It's coming. I can't We're wait. We're just so far away, so I'll take I a wanted minute. to like hold it up in our video today. No, like, I should. You gotta get this book. <laughs> but, I don't have it in this room with me, but yeah, that's okay. I, <laughs> is it's there coming. Is there anything you would like to say uh, to our to Do we our have time? Because I could explain something else if you. Oh, we absolutely have time. Okay. If you have time, I, I blocked off. I blocked off a couple hours for us. Oh, to that's great. Sort of um, just spend some time together. So Ooh. go ahead and spend okay. as much time as you would like with everyone. Because we were talking about that before we um, recording. We were recording, but I was talk telling you a little bit about how I some of the work I do with people. And so I'd love to share it because, you know, maybe it's something that people could guide themselves through a little bit. I would, know, I would love or, that. Yeah, I'm going to click off my screen so that it's only you. Okay. And you go for it. It's all you. <laughs> I'm in my daughter's bedroom so, like, everyone can see the poster of, my, of the little doggies. I love little doggies. People there's love doggies. No, there's nothing better than puppies and kittens, so you're all good. <laughs> and kittens. Love them. Okay, so... So I was, I was telling Athena that sometimes when I'm working with somebody, you know, you know, a lot of stuff happens in our past and it's hard to let go of it. And there's a lot of reasons and I, I won't go into them too much, but, um, you know, I talk about them in all my videos, but there's reasons why we hold on to the past. But there's like, um, when we have some traumatic experiences happen to us, there's like an energetic imprint that happens. Like, so we're affected now even though it happened in the past like it's obviously not happening now sometimes we could feel like it's in the present and there's there's reasons for that too but we have this energetic imprint and so sometimes in my work with people we change that imprint this is the most exciting work that i do is um is help someone change that story. So when something happens to us, we have a story about it. Oh gosh, I, I just have all of a sudden this stuff flooded I want to share with you. But, um, you know, when something happens to us, we have the story about it. We have this imprint of this 
a horrible betrayal, those terrifying times. And um, we forget that there's another part of that story. Um, I'm talking about two things right now. I'm going to go back to the first one, then I'm going to explain the second one because it's so exciting too. Um, so what I do with people, so when they have this energetic imprint and it's like niggling, I don't know if any of you have ever experienced when you have those memories that kind of niggle you, they kind of want to come up and out. They're bothering you a little bit. And, and it's like they want you to process them. It's like when you're um, when you're remembering stuff you had remembered, like when you're coming up with those memories. Um, this is a great time to do it. But we in a guided, really safe meditation, we go to before that incident happened, like before it. You know, it could be an hour or a few hours before it. So we, no one relives it. No one has to go through the trauma again. But we go to before it happened. And we see that little us, and we take them, like we take them out of the situation. We change the energy imprint of the situation. And so we don't let the incident happen. We settle the abuser down so they don't need that, you know, for their own crazy. And then we take that little us into us and take it back, comfort it, and counsel it, and, you know, say it's not your fault, everything's okay, I'm going to take you, come with me. And um, there's a lot of counseling done to that young person, but it completely changes the imprint of that energy around that event. And so people stop being triggered by that, the stuff that I was telling someone about it today. And I was saying, um, you know, there's this person who beans was a trigger because he was eating beans right before a traumatic event, like a soup. And so having soup with beans in it, and tomatoes was it was it triggered him always and we did this technique and now he doesn't have those triggers anymore because the energetic imprint is just not there it's not going to trigger his brain anymore we switched it isn't that kind of the most exciting work you could think of like to i don't know what you think about that maybe you've no. tried it in different ways no i I'm I'm all ears and I think it I think it would be incredible. I have I have a couple of questions regarding that work. Yeah, tell me. So, um I'm I'm definitely understanding what you're saying about um the energetic imprint that happens during the trauma and I know exactly what you're talking about, especially with like every single one of my clients has those new memories and they sort of niggle. And yeah. um and then it's very, very common in the work I do that my clients get stuck in that old place and they don't want to go there. They run from it. But my question for you regarding this particular modality, and I'm not sure if it's like NLP sort of related with woven in with other different different things, but um, I guess the question I have is most of the clients I work with, their abuse was ongoing from like pre-verbal all the way through like teenage years and so how in the world can we apply this modality to my like the, the the clients I work with that are usually like they're usually sexually abused from 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 infancy all and like on and off and re-traumatized and re-victimized all the way through their teenage years so yes me too I've worked with them too and, and even they, like you said, have those niggling memories. And so you might do this process several times getting the echo. Again, that's why I'm distracted when I talk, but oh, it's gone. <laughs> you know how you get the echo and then you can't like put a sentence together? Um, so they have these niggling memories, and so you do that memory. This could heal several memories, but it also changes the identity of the person. And so maybe, uh, you know, a week later, a few months later, there's another niggling memory. And then you do the process that one. And yes, someone who has been chronically abused for a really, really long time has a lot of these. But if you think about this one process helping kind of a lot of them, you know, sometimes those niggling memories are like a conglomerate of memories. Um, and sometimes they're single. It, but it doesn't matter. There's still a healing that happens. Even if you're just healing that one imprint, you're going towards something. And like the person has a little more confidence, you know, it has a little more hope. If they feel better about that, they'll stick with the work. I mean, there's so many benefits to it. And you could do this because the process only takes like 20 minutes. You could do it again and again with in, in your in 
the person's healing. So they're healing more than just that one incident. And so after that work together for a period of time, you know, they're really coming out of that identity of victimhood. The other thing I was going to say is, um, does that make sense before I move on? It does. It absolutely does. Um, I had one follow-up question before sure, you go shifted because yeah, yeah. I wanted you to be able to shift into the other, the yeah. other portion of what you were talking about because it was so exciting. So I don't want you to forget. I won't. <laughs> okay. So the follow-up question I have regarding this, you mentioned it takes about 20 minutes. So how does this, um, this sort of taking away of the imprint, this 20 minute ish procedure where we go before the trauma happened and we counsel the younger self. Um, how is that, how is that different from EMDR? Is there any type of eye movement desensitization or anything that's happening during that time? Or is this completely different or is it similar? Um, I'm, no, so, I, I'm so curious. No, that's really good. I mean, I have, um, I do, I do have limited knowledge on EMDR. I do do a tapping. So, um, you know, I have, I do have some knowledge of EMDR, but it's, a um, and, and I do have some knowledge of tapping. And so I think a lot of times the tapping is the tapping, but a lot of times it's a story you're recreating, you know? So if you, if you ever work with, um, uh, someone who, you know what I'm talking about? EFT? Ta EFT. Yes. Tapping. Yeah. We have a huge, 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 yeah sub subset of our community that are um that yeah, are uh, they're really really excited about tapping and then i think there was just a there was a world summit a tapping world summit just recently um i forget the gentleman's name but yes i know we know exactly what you're i Mac, think that most Mac order people, yes yes order, yeah yes so um yeah so so it's like that you know, I mean, I've done I've done a lot of tapping with clients, and I've seen a lot of tapping done, and I know it works a lot better when you're talking through the story too. You know, so it's the change in story and combination with that tapping is really powerful. So I don't know enough about EMDR to know like, do you talk through it? Do, are you changing meaning with EMDR? Yes. Or you're just yeah. So yes. I don't know. You're making about it. new making new roads. Like instead of turning right, you turn left, and instead of going there, you go there, and and yeah, there's sort of know. like it. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know much about it. I know, no, like in the okay. passive way, like you know, <laughs> listening to those tones or squeezing or ironing or squeezing, you know, without the um, you know, as a relaxing technique and as a healing technique, nonverbal. That's how I know of it, but yeah. So, but the verbal part on top of it would probably be really effective. But it's all about changing beliefs. Like all healing is changing beliefs, and so you could do it with these when you're helping trigger the brain with the MDR and with tapping. Of course, you're going to have extra benefits to it. But you could just change the beliefs with talk therapy and like guided meditations, um, walking. I mean, reading. I mean, there's so many different ways you could. Um, to get a new belief, like to not be afraid. I mean, we do guided meditation, so you're not afraid. Sometimes it's hard to um, to take on new beliefs, but if you do it in your imagination first in a guided meditation or what we call a shamanic journey, like it gets rid of the fear, and so you could do it. You could do that work, and then it's like it's in you already. Like you've you've made that commitment. It's powerful. It's it's um it has a lot of meaning, and so. That's that's um so that's why EMDR works so well. That's why tapping works so well. But I think that story with it because I'm a narrative therapist. Okay, so I studied narrative therapy, and it's all about the story and how the you know how we have to change beliefs. Our story creates our identity, and when it's a sad and victimized story, our identity is that we're worthless. You know, we're ashamed. Um, we're a mess. We're psychotic. Whatever we say, we're anxious. We don't yeah, deserve totally. happiness. Yeah. We don't yeah. deserve peace. We don't deserve joy. Exactly, exactly. And so that um, worthlessness is identity because of that story. And if we change the story through whatever, by changing beliefs about what happened and changing meaning around what happened, that's how we heal. And so if you add EMDR to it, you add tapping to it, or you do it in a guided meditation, all of those access something that it's hard to access when you're kind of have fear in the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. They just help you. 
yes. and help shift. And I do write about this a lot in my book, like that we can change the brain, those triggers um, that we have. I just want to tell you everything, but this is another way narrative therapy works with trauma. Like it thinks about trauma. Like when you have a history of trauma, you have like a half memory of what happened. Um, you remember the horridness and the, the um, experience and the victimhood of it and the vulnerability in that. And that's what you remember, but that's only half memory because the other part of the experience is what you did to survive. And obviously if you're here and watching this video, you've survived. And that is nothing short of like amazingly awesome that you survived. And so there's this other part of the story of what you did to survive that time. And it could be in your head, that hope that you had, or it could be um, actions that you took, saved a younger sibling or a cousin or something, or um, read, like, you know, read fiction to escape it or something, or did well in school so you can make something of yourself. I mean, people do all kinds of things to survive their abusive childhoods. And, um, and but a lot of that, a lot of times that stuff is subjugated like the abusers themselves has like put down those things, like really put down that stuff. So not only do we not notice it or give ourselves credit for it, um, we we think it's you know we think it's a male adjustment or something when it's like amazing skills and survival, and we're, and we're ashamed of it. Because, we're ashamed of it because since, since oftentimes our abuser is shaming us for it. They're shaming us for doing something that they never did. So they're actually coming from a place of, of envy and and ugliness and jealousy, yeah. and they just want to. Um, they want to take you down because yeah. if you're put down, then you then you're they'll have to go. Or, yeah. you know, it, that, I mean, that's part of a power tactic is to like you know to ridicule or gaslight you know any of your skills or anything that will give you power. You, you know, if so, if a, if a survivor is what, you know, when they were younger, when they were in the situation is expressing some kind of power, that abuser is going to put them down for that, going to make them think that it's crazy that they did it or something. That's gaslighting. You probably talk about that all the time. Oh, yeah. It makes you feel nuts. And so we, you know, we don't remember those parts of it because we don't. And I tell this story in my book about this girl who was abused by her uncle. And so she started to instead of playing with the kids out when she, her uncle was a like a um, was a teen when she was little like her mom was a lot older than her brother you know so when she went to her grandparents' house the uncle was still living as a teenager with his parents you know what I mean yeah and so he um, and then you know it's very common kind of situation and so he would abuse her when they were playing and so she she did a, first of all she totally felt completely responsible like everyone does but she also um instead of playing with the kids after that stayed in the women and drank tea stayed in the kitchen and drank tea with the women they made fun of her for not playing with the kids right and she also like her uncle would do a peephole i'm sorry if this is a trigger warning some her uncle would peep through the bathroom and so she was afraid to go to the bathroom and so one time she peed on her grandma's floor um, and of course she was completely ridiculed, but to me, these were amazing acts of like courage and like self preservation that she did. But of course she didn't see it like that. So she has this one half of the story of that. She, you know, caused this to happen to her and it was traumatic and awful and embarrassing, but she's leaving out this other half of the story of her, and it, the initiative she takes and the skills that she took about what is important to her in her life. So any skills that you take to survive says something about what's important and precious to you in your life. What is like, and so for her, it was like, I'm worth not being hurt. I'm worth not being looked at. You know, it's, it was her worth that was precious. And so once she realized that and had that second story, now she's got a whole memory instead of just a half memory. And that takes a lot of the symptoms away, like a lot of that, a lot of the shame and the guilt and the anxiety that we have. Um, making that memory a whole memory instead of a half memory shrinks up all those symptoms, all those effects of the, the abuse that we have. I've seen it over and over. It's pretty cool.
Wow, it sounds really, really powerful, and I'm glad you shared about that. I can, I'm sitting here ticking off the people ticking off the number of people I know that that I will tell this video about and they'll probably have light bulb moments because yeah. of the way you describe that it's so similar to the narrative of so many colleagues and even clients I have so yeah exactly exactly yeah look up Mary in the book um, that's the story I tell but Wonderful. I explain it a little bit yeah so was um, was there was that the powerful thing that you wanted to share earlier? Yeah, today? the double, okay, the, the whole, <laughs> the whole memory. Getting back to a whole memory is very healing, and then changing the energetic imprint is healing, and understanding the anxiety, understanding why we have guilt is very healing, you know. And then that repetitive, like it's not my fault, it's not my fault, it's not my fault, is, um, you know. So doing that from all sides. And the anxiety piece I'm talking about, you know, helping with the brain, and we talked about the tapping. So we really covered a lot here. Yeah, um, this has been very comprehensive and very, very helpful. And I'm so grateful that you've taken so much time uh, to spend with our community today. And yes. I just, I, I want to encourage every single one of you right now, if you're still watching this video, which I hope you are, if this has been helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and comments below for Jody. Yeah. Um, I answer all my online comments. <laughs> and and subscribe to Jody Amon's channel by going to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Jody Amon. The link is in the description. The link to her book on Amazon is in the description. JodyAmon.com is her website. And we're just so honored to have you here with us today. And I'm grateful. And I can't wait until I can make it out. Um, your way when I reschedule my Yay. trip. <laughs> when I do, I would love um, for us to be able to get together somehow, and um, even whether it's for an event for survivors or even just to have a cup of tea or coffee or something, I would just love that. So, oh, it sounds great. Absolutely. We should, yeah, we should plan a retreat together. I would be honored and I would oh, love that. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. We'll talk off the air. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end this broadcast, but you go ahead and stay in the green room with me and we'll talk about that a little bit more, okay? Okay, great. Thank right, you. Well, thank oh. you, everyone. I was thank just kidding. Thank you so much, Jody. <laughs> you guys, go um, go subscribe to Jody's YouTube channel. And thank you again. I'm Athena Moberg, and this has been um, Jody Amen, author and therapist. You can work with her. Go to jodyamon.com, click on Work With Me, and find out how you can hire her to be your therapist if any of this has resonated with you. So um, we love to bring you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery, and we'll uh, see you next week on live Q&A and in our private secret Facebook groups. Bye, everybody.